How's it going guys? Welcome back to the vlog. I hope you're having a great day. Now one of the most common questions I get asked on my channel is how comes none of your tanks have algae? Well guess what? They do. MD MD, we just clicked on your video because it said in the title that you didn't get algae and now you're saying you do. I know, I know, hear me out, hear me out. So the first thing you need to look at when you're trying to fix an algae issue is your lighting. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna have too much light for the tank. If there's too much light in the tank, it doesn't matter what else you do, you will get algae. If you've got an LED light, you can easily just put a few bits of black tape over some of the LEDs and that should dim it. Or if you've got a light that is dimmable, dim it down a bit. Some people put up the argument saying that reduce the amount of time that you've got the lights on for but for instance I have my lights on for 14 hours a day but what I like to do is adjust the brightness of certain lights depending on how high they are above the tank or if there's any algae issues developing. So for instance right now I'm stood in front of Pancho's tank and on the surface everything looks fine and it, majority of it is fine but if we take a closer look good 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 oh what's this random stuff here it's like a brown algae like a brownie stringy grimy algae it's the only part of the tank that's got any algae on it. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's there, but this is proof to you. I get algae. I get algae in certain tanks in certain areas. And what I do is I deal with it as soon as possible. Okay, that's great. You deal with it. But how do you deal with it? Well, certain algae like this one here, it's just a simple case of sucking it out. If it's something that's attached to plants like crypts or something like that, you know, that's, that won't just come off from suction, then I'll trim the leaves. Because in my opinion, it's better to sacrifice a few leaves of the plant than having your whole tank turn into a massive bombsite mess, disgustingness of algae really bad description words carry on but saying that this tank here which is my goldfish aquarium i've got ranchu in here and an oranda so it's the oranchu aquarium this doesn't get any algae the only algae it does <laughs> this doesn't get any algae apart from this algae the algae that it does get is green dust algae. And that's quite common. It's just something that just goes on the surface of the glass. And depending on the, you know, sort of light levels, I'll get more or less. But the good thing about that algae, so easy to clean, isn't it? You just give it a quick wipe all over after a water change or during a water change and you're good to go again. I think if there is one algae that you want in your tank, if you had to have one, it would be green dust algae. So easily sorted. But then we get, ugh. But then we get something like this bad boy where I just keep getting this string algae. It keeps coming back. I've never ever had a tank that's done this. So there must be some sort of imbalance that I can't work out. And I'm guessing it's because of the shape of the scape. It's just stopping decent flow around it. So flow is probably the issue with this one. It's another reason why I'm gonna be breaking it down. I keep getting rid of the algae, making it perfect, and it keeps coming back. I don't heavily overfeed it, so I think it's just a flow issue, really. And, you know, waste settling in certain areas and building up. So I'm over here at my recently set up freshwater reef aquarium. Now, it's doing very well, but it's also got another form of algae, or I think it's algae anyway, but diatoms. Uh, yeah, it's an algae. So any new setup that uses quite a bit of sand, I find, always tends to get this sort of brownie tinge to a lot of the plants except for this hydroculture Japan because that's new and it looks insanely good. I'm actually gonna add that to this tank. But if you look, everywhere's got sort of like a greeny tinge, the sand there, it just needs sort of stirring up. But that's normal. That's the sort of one that you've just got to wait it out, do your water changes, keep up on your maintenance, and that will sort itself out over time. And if it doesn't, I don't know, because it always has. For me, it always has. If it doesn't, there's something else wrong. But new tank syndrome, I like to call it, and it's completely normal on setting up of new tanks. But over now to my new desk surround, this is looking awesome, but there was one thing I wanted to show you guys, another form of algae that I've got that I've not had before. And that is over here on the bowl aquarium. If you look, it's got a green tinge to the water. So this is like a, so this is like a green water algae issue. Keeping up on your maintenance, regular water changes will sort this. This is a no filter bowl aquarium and with no filter bowls, or any no filter tank, you do get this weird cycling effect where sometimes it goes a little bit misty. You do get the green water as the plants are settling and growing in, but that will redeem itself eventually. You just have to be patient with it and just let it grow in thick. And then we come down to Mike's Aquarium. Now, this is almost perfect. There's a little bit of filament algae on some of the mosses in the background, and there's this little sort of stringy stuff on the glass surface itself. Now, it's tiny, it's a small amount, 
it's contained and it doesn't bother me like you shouldn't fret over it too much if there's a bit of algae in your tanks it's all natural and don't worry about it too much keep on top of it by all means but don't try and get rid of every last bit because it's just going to do your head in and you're not going to enjoy the tank as much as you should be It's been a few days since I first filmed that first part of the video and we've got some sort of green water coming up through the no filter tank. This is absolutely normal in the starting setup of a no filter tank. Now the way to combat this, just a quick water change and it normally means that there's just too much light at the moment for the amount of plants in there. So what we do, take the water out, put in some floating plants. So I'm going to be doing a big water change on this bowl. Normally I wouldn't do so much, but I've been running a bit too much light on the tank and it does need it. You may also see that some of the UG is starting to uproot. This is because of the snails. The snails keep attacking it and pulling it up. Not a lot I can do about that. Just have to see what does stay and what doesn't. It might come to the point where I have to take it all out, but we'll just see how that goes. And then down here, guys, I've actually got a load of this sort of mini water lettuce. Now, this stuff's awesome. I love the little sort of tentacles, for lack of a better word. Uh, well, they're roots, but, you know, they look like alien tentacles coming down. They're quite long, but I think they'll look quite cool. So I'm going to put these into the tank, not the duckweed, because it just goes crazy. But this stuff grows nice and steady, to be honest. So I'll put that in. Now that water lettuce, it doesn't need to stay in there the whole time because it's kind of like big and overtakes the rest of the scape otherwise. But we'll just keep it in there to pull those excess nutrients out of the water column and then we can remove it later on when the plants are fully established and settled in better. By that point, it might be looking awesome and I'll probably want to keep it in anyway. <laughs> So here I am again guys, back with Mike's tank. He's got a little bit of like thread algae in the back. You can't really notice it that bad, but if I don't sort it out, it's gonna get really bad. Now, as you can see, the moss has gone nuts in this tank anyway, so it could do with a trim back. And I think that's the best way to combat thread algae that you've got in moss. Just cut it back, just cut it off, get it out of the tank. I mean, sometimes that is the only option, right? Okay guys, hopefully you can see how brutal I was there. I just pulled out a massive clump of it and that's got the majority of the algae out. It's hard to see it now because it's like so fine when it's out of the water, but that's full of algae. That needs to come out. Pretty much job done now. <laughs> Poor little Michael, he's like, what the hell's going on? There we go, look, Mike's tank's back to looking great again. That uh, Rotalo HR is just peeking over the top as well, which is looking really nice, but he's buzzing all around the tank. Yeah, there will be a little bit of algae dotted about here and there, but that's what I'm trying to get across to you guys. You can't get rid of all of it. It's gonna be there, you know, and you're just gonna have to deal with it, or don't. I mean, it's up to you. But I think it's safe to say that it is worth the extra effort. So if you've got one tank that's particularly bad, that you try and everything, it won't just fix itself. I'd start again, honestly. You know, there's only so much you can try, right? And some tanks just get algae no matter what you do, and you don't know why. Other tanks, not so much at all, and you can cope with it. If you're struggling really bad, I'd start again, personally. I know that can sound a bit defeatist, but the whole point of this hobby is to enjoy it. And if you're spending too much time fretting about it, stressing about it, you're not gonna be enjoying the tank, are you? Start it again, that's the fun part anyway, isn't it? Building the tank up is a fun part. And you know what guys, one tank that always looks great regardless of any algae in it at all, is this tank. This is my Ranchu, Oranchu, Oranda tank, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, look at how good they look, they're always fun. And actually thinking about changing this scape soon as well to go for something absolutely completely different that I've never done before. Some people will love it, some people will hate it, but that's the fun of it all, right? Nothing like splitting opinions in the comment section, is there? <laughs> Thank you.
And this right here is one of those tanks that I'm talking about, guys. It's a nightmare. Like, I cannot get rid of this algae for the life of me. I did get it to go at one point, and then it came straight back again within a couple of weeks. I don't know what else to do. I've tried everything. It's really, really annoying me. So I'm just going to strip it down and do something different. I mean, I don't suffer with algae in any of the other tanks. So there's obviously something wrong with this setup that's causing it. And I'm thinking it's a flow issue. It could be waste collecting in one area. Uh, it's just not getting the flow going for it to clean it out. So I'm going to strip it down and I'm going to restart it. But one thing that is good is the cave fish look there's one of them i think yeah i think it's that one there or is it a different one no it is that one yeah that one at the back there's just an absolute beast like he's way bigger than the rest see as he comes closer look he's massive why is he so big and the rest is so small like <laughs> see there you go but well, that's brilliant they're doing great in here to be fair but it's an eyesore i don't like how it looks let's just back out for a minute see what i mean like the plants aren't doing well because of the algae issues there's lots really going on there that i'm not happy with Plus, if we take it out and start again, we've got a load more rock to work with. So let's just get on with it and do that now. And there we have it, guys. Job done. Not had a deep clean, but I'm feeling so much better that it's actually fixed because it's no longer there, obviously. So one of the main reasons I wanted to break this tank down was because I wanted to know what the hell was going on with it really, just so I could mainly learn from it and stop the same situation happening again. Now it turns out that no matter how many water changes I could have done, it wouldn't have made any difference. Very quickly after ripping out most of the plants and pulling up some of the rocks, I could tell that there were dead pockets everywhere just where waste was collecting. Now water changes are only effective if you're removing the waste with the water. Well that wasn't happening because it was so deep down I didn't even know they were there. And it was also a really funky smell going on when I was removing it all as well which is not good. But overall I'm really happy that we sorted that out and now I know what the problem was. If I was to do a tank like this again, you know escape where there's like lots of rock piled up and possible dead spots, I'd definitely put a wave maker or a big power head in there just to keep that water flow going around everywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one out guys and put it over next to Timmy in that far corner. You can still open the door then and everything will be good. And this thing from Ikea, the stand, is going to come over to this side. And on there I'm going to put a shallow tank so it doesn't impact on any views and it'll look awesome. We can do another little shallow tank. I'm thinking of an indoor pond. I haven't actually done that yet so that'll be cool. And then here's going to be that racking system that we spoke about before. So I've got two racks then. One that I can work from and then also one as we walk in on this side only comes out a little bit. I can get even more smaller sort of nanos and that in this area. I'm pointing at nothing. Look, Oh look at nothing. And in case you guys are wondering what I've done with the fish, they're down here in my plant storage tank. Uh, cave the cave fish are down there i'll find a new home for them or i'll take them back to the shop i got from when it's available to don't know when that could be but you know see how it goes and then guys if you remember i put about five otto sinkless catfish in the cave aquarium when i set it up well when i added the fish i only found three in the end so i guess the cave tetras actually had two of them that's the thing with the cave tetras i can't just put them in any tank because they will kill whatever's in with them they're like little piranhas Makes sense, they're part of the Tetra family, so... A few times when I've been in the tank, they give me a little nip as well, and yeah, obviously, I don't think they've got teeth, but you can certainly tell they've got a little bit of a punch to them. But yeah, so those autos are going to be doing great in here anyway, because I'm going to be adding more as we go along. When it's time to fully stock it, we get lots more fish. But it's always good just to get a few in there, get a bit of ammonia building. Obviously, it's not going to be a lot, but if you start small and build your way up, then, you know, you're on to a winner. By slowly increasing the stocking that you've got into your tank, you'll also increase the beneficial bacteria in your filter and also around the tank as well. So I think guys overall what we're saying is if you've got algae deal with it straight away get rid of it don't let it build up and if you do that you should stay low levels at least manageable levels all the time. So you may well have noticed the CO2 in that clip in the next video I'm going to explain to you guys about that how I added it what it is exactly but for this episode we're finished click the subscribe button hit the notification bell because there's loads more coming soon to you.